Now in the second sutra, the Bhikkhaka Sutta, S720, the discourse on the almsman or, or the mendicant. And here we have a different kind of situation. We have a Brahmin who who thinks he's a religious man. So this is uh, how the sutta goes. Translation on page 175. Originating in Savati. Then a, a mendicant Brahmin or armsman Brahmin, if you like, approached the Blessed One and greeted him. When the courteous and friendly exchange was concluded, he sat down at one side. Sitting thus at one side, the mendicant Brahmin said to the Blessed One, I, Master Gotama, am a mendicant or an armsman, and you too, sir, are a mendicant or armsman. What is uh, what is the uh, difference? What is there between us? Right. So he wants to know uh, whether he he's like the Buddha. <laughs> is he a, like a monk too, if you like? Uh, now this. Then the Buddha replies, "One is not a mendicant that way, merely from begging." others for arms. Having taken up the domestic life, one as such is not a monk, is not a bhikkhu. But who has abandoned both good and bad? One who lives the holy life, fares in the world with wisdom, he is indeed called a monk or a mendicant. So here Buddha gives quite a direct reply. But it's quite a profound one in a sense. However, here it kind of the it, it caught the imagination of this Brahmin. He he understands it, although the teaching is quite deep. For example, the the Buddha says, uh, "One who has abandoned both good and evil." Because this is the description of an arhat. Uh, the arhat, in other words. Is someone who doesn't create karma anymore, right? So here, we have to be very careful not to intellectualize this teaching on being a beyond good and evil. It's not something we choose. It's not something we intellectualize about. We can't say, "Oh, you know, I'm I'm beyond good and evil." There's no such thing. The definitely there is still delusion. So whatever we do is still bad in that sense. Uh, if we do not really have have either generosity, uh, kindness, or compassion behind it, those act. So here, beyond good and evil means in the case of the arahat, he has uprooted greed, hate, and delusion, the, the three motivators of karma, if you like. So whatever he does, is always kind of uh, there is wisdom behind it. In other words, so it's not karma in a normal sense. It does not uh, create a kind of uh, potential for retaliatory kind of uh, feedback or kind of uh, kind of karma that comes back. By way of payback, so the, the Arhat and Rus is a very natural person. He is full of compassion, and uh, he he is always present to the people. Sadly, the, the some so-called Buddhists who do not, do not study the early texts properly, they hear some kind of uh, remarks uh, which are unfounded characterizing the arahat as someone who is unfeeling and doesn't kind of uh, interact with society, is not compassionate, that, that's far from true at all. That is very false. Take the wises of the arahat, uh, Sariputta for example. We know him usually as uh, famous, foremost for his wisdom. But we must also remember he is also foremost for his compassion and humility. There are many stories of how 
Sariputta would go around checking the sick, on the sick monks and the, make sure, making sure the young novices are provided for, they have enough to eat, they have a place to live, to stay in. And uh, when the monks go out uh, on, on their walks, in other words, they're traveling with the Buddha at the head, Sariputta is not always in front with the Buddha. Very often he would go quite after the, the, the community has left, he would check in the monastery to make sure everything is kind of in order and so on. And only then he will leave. So we have, and he cares for lay people too. When he visits a place, he would ask around, how is this layman, how is that layman? And if they are in difficulties, he will go to see them and, and counsel them and talk to them. So we have this kind of uh, very compassionate picture of the Arhat. So here, the Arhat has abandoned both good and evil, or both good and bad. Whatever he actually does is a natural response to what people need and is good for them. So they live their life in uh, this last life with wisdom. So this person is truly called a monk, someone who who deserves his arms. So the good thing is here we have this Brahmin accepting the Buddha's teaching and the Sutta closes with the refuge going stock passage, right? He takes refuge in the three jewels to the Buddha, the Dhamma and, and the Sangha. In other words here we have this Brahmin who is ready, spiritually ready. I mean probably in the previous lives he has been listening to the Buddha, past Buddhas, and in this life he also practices and he only needs to hear this teaching from the Buddha and then he takes refuge. Again here we have this cameo kind of snap snapshot about him. We're not told what happens to him after this. Right? So these are things that we as I said we, we have to keep it open. The idea here is that the Buddha is saying, uh, you're not a monk merely by going out there to, to collect arms. You, you have to live a kind of life where you overcome all the unwholesomeness, all the negative emotions, all the defilements. And then when you become an arhat, you're truly a monk. Or at least, if you keep to the Vinaya rules, you are a good monk. Okay? So th this is the teaching on the Bhikkha Sutta, the Amsman. Let us now close by doing a short reflection. The Buddha is still with us, reminding us that the Dharma is still there for us to study and practice and realize. It is in the suttas. We if we study Pali diligently, or even read the English translations carefully and learn some of the key Pali terms, it helps us to understand the Buddha's teaching very clearly and very effectively. Reflecting in this way is very good karma. By the power of such karma, may we be blessed with wisdom and strength and courage to aspire to at least attain stream winning in this life itself. With the power of the three jewels, let us direct our loving kindness to all our loved ones and those who have been kind to us and supportive of us. May they be well and happy. And those who are practicing the Dharma too, may they, in this life itself, attain the goal of the true teaching, awakening. And also by the same token, by the power of the three jewels, may those who are lost or teaching the wrong things, or may they to see the true Dharma and practice it so that they attain awakening in this life itself. May all beings be well and happy. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.